Hello, my name is Kyle Baylitz, and I'm here to do something a little different. My brother says there's quite a few videos that talk about mental health and kind of the interview style, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna ask my brother a few questions about him living with bipolar disorder type two, I believe, or it's bipolar disorder type one. And uh, we'll just continue on from there and just pass off the mic. Okay, so the first question I wanted to ask my brother is, uh, what is bipolar disorder to you in your own definition? Bipolar disorder to me means someone who suffers from a mental illness, otherwise they experience uh, mania and depression. It's not like someone who might be a little sad or someone who might be a little happy. These are all elevated and you're at an elevated state of mania and a depressed state of depression. That is my definition of bipolar disorder. Okay, so moving on from there, I wanted to ask him uh, to kind of start us off with, with uh, how he was diagnosed with bipolar and when was he diagnosed with bipolar? And uh, if you could describe his first uh, uh, symptoms and uh, data when he was uh, uh, officially diagnosed. So ironically, my situation was a little different than most people. Most people who experience bipolar disorder, it's usually a gradual uh, period in which they experience symptoms such as maybe reckless spending or really sad states or maybe uh, hypersexuality. I didn't really experience any of that. It started in 2008 when I was just depressed and I wanted to take some medication. So the med doctor put me on, uh, just the regular family practitioner put me on Paxil, so I took that for maybe two weeks. Ironically, what happened was I was at school with my brother in 2008. I believe it was sometime in uh, maybe early fall, and what happened was I was experiencing a euphoric state. I was still on Paxil at the time, and what happened was that I ended up in a really euphoric state, was giggling a lot, and I almost felt drunk, but in a happy drunk style. I think what happened was that I was just feeling really good about myself and I just it was just like kind of like laughing gas and I just felt really happy. So what happened was that I ended up going to the, the doctor, the family practitioner. Um, he told me that what I've been experiencing was mania and it was triggered by the, the antidepressant. So what happens is uh, when you're on the antidepressant, it elevates your mood, but when you're manic, it elevates that even further, so you end up in a euphoric state. So that happened in 2008, and that's exactly how I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So people with bipolar disorder have that kind of reaction. Uh, people can tell their bipolar is when they take an antidepressant, it makes those uh, those those high manic reactions. So I just wanted to ask what have been some of the challenges over the past decade of living with bipolar disorder? So I want to throw this out there is that I've been uh, had a, a co-diagnosis or a different diagnosis known as schizoaffective disorder. Uh, I believe it was schizoaffective bipolar type disorder and what happened was that a mix of schizophrenic symptoms such as hearing voices telling me that I should kill myself. And my total uh, reaction to that in 2009 was a state in which I heard voices telling me to kill myself. So I ended up hanging a rope in the gazebo and I ended up in the hospital for the first time in June 2009. They diagnosed me with schizoaffective disorder, bipolar type, since I was already diagnosed or pre-diagnosed with uh, bipolar two disorder, bipolar type two disorder. So the challenge that I want to explain is that every year has been slightly different, actually quite different. I haven't actually had the same symptoms over the years. Uh, I think the type of medications that I've been taking has been, uh, have a tremendous 
uh, effect on me and depending on what I was taking at the time or not taking at the time, that affected my mood and the challenge I believe that happened in 2009 was I was on a whole bunch of medications for antipsychotics for treating the psychosis that I experienced and that I didn't put myself on medications for maybe three or four years in which led to 2012 my or 2014 my breakdown in which I ended up severely depressed I was already on lithium treatment for bipolar disorder I've been on lithium for maybe seven years and after that what happened was that in 2014 I ended up really depressed apathetic really not motivated unable to do anything and they situated me in a couple hospitalizations I've had uh, one hospitalization in 2009, one in 2010, 2000, two in 2014, two in 2015, one in 2017, and a total of seven hospitalizations. So, in a nutshell, I've been really struggling with suicidal ideation. That was my biggest struggle with bipolar disorder. And the truth is, for the matter of fact, when I'm severely depressed, that's usually when the suicidal ideations happen, but it's not always the case sometimes. I'm just feeling really irritable, manic, and I just end up doing something really stupid. I've actually never been, uh, I don't have a felony, I don't have a misdemeanor, I don't have any of that. I have a few warnings, but none of those heavy set things that usually happens when people are struck with bipolar disorder. Okay, so uh, what is has been the best treatment so far, the current best treatment for you? So the current best treatment so far has been the right medications. It's so important to have the right cocktail. Uh, right now I take, it's pretty simple, I take Zimbalta 60 milligrams, Metoprolol 50 milligrams, once Zimbalta is an antidepressant, Metoprolol is a blood pressure medication, I take that in the morning and at night when I go to sleep I take uh, Latuda 80 milligrams and I take um, the other drug is Lamictal which is another mood stabilizer uh, and that's the only drugs I take currently okay so uh, how do you feel being uh, diagnosed with bipolar and what is your advice for other people uh, struggling like you were when you first were diagnosed it's a pretty lonely illness because the truth is uh, when you're first diagnosed you don't take it seriously. The second truth is usually there's other people that don't take you seriously. They might say you have bipolar disorder but it's just something that they don't take seriously. So the biggest issue that I struggle with is that even for myself I felt like I didn't want to be bipolar, bipolar no more or I believed that I wasn't bipolar. I wasn't a person who went off his meds when I felt good. I always stuck to a routine. So that's another beneficial of how I've actually reacted to uh, my disorder and medication. I think the biggest part of being lonely is the fact that it's really hard to have relationships. And for me, uh, personally, I feel that if something goes wrong, it triggers pretty severe depression. Uh, sometimes I go into reckless spending because I'm pretty lonely. Uh, another fact is that when you're suicidal, it's really hard to tell people unless they're really close to you. And at sometimes when you're suicidal, them being around still isn't really that helpful. So in reality, you're kind of stuck in the state of suicidal ideations and um, you're just struggling there, sitting there, urge surfing it the entire way and it's pretty uncomfortable, pretty painful. Uh, so what is your advice for people struggling with bipolar disorder? So for those struggling with bipolar disorder, the number one thing that you could probably do for yourself is admit yourself to see a psychiatrist. If things go really, really bad and you're suicidal, it's recommended to enter into a psychiatric hospitalization facility. That's the second best bet. And once you're going through that, being on the right medication is really important. And if you want to take things further, 
going to a dialectical behavioral therapy group or a personal therapist is definitely helpful and maintaining your social support that's extremely helpful when it comes to treating your bipolar disorder at least maintaining relationships is really important when it comes to uh, trying to maintain a pretty happy lifestyle. I think um, my advice for you when it comes to how do you deal with the everyday situation, well, I feel that having a routine is very helpful. As I said in my previous video, it's important to have a routine down so you have a reason to get up in the morning. I think those are pretty much it. Okay, I think this is gonna be the last question. Uh, what have you learned uh, with bipolar disorder and was there any positive uh, positive thoughts or experiences that you got out of uh, through the struggles that you had in the past decade? The truth is when it comes to the nuts and bolts of things, bipolar disorder is extremely painful. I think the most painful situation is when you're suicidal and you want to end your life and that's the only voice you hear inside your head. However, living with bipolar disorder for 11 years since 2008, right now it's 2019, I think the biggest thing that you can tell yourself is that you are a very resilient person. The battery's gonna run out soon, I think, but I'm not sure why it's blinking. But anyways, with that in a nutshell, you're a very resilient person and you have the opportunity to tell other people your story. You have the opportunity to maybe change other people's situation and hope for the better to inspire people to maybe somehow impact their lives for those that might be struggling with mental illness. Has it helped? Has it helped? Has it helped with any of your creative talents like music and piano or singing or art? Yeah, I've always been a really creative person. My biggest backdrop is I have 120 songs that I loaded on Bandcamp, SoundClick, SoundCloud, Reverb Nation, uh, all those that I have. And I think when I'm depressed, I make music, I make raps, I make poetry, I make beats. But also sometimes when I'm happy, I, I do the same thing. But at the same time, I feel like when I'm empty, that's usually when I start making a lot of impactful music on which I describe as being cathartic. Okay. I think that's all we have for today, okay? Thank you ladies and gentlemen for uh, uh, listening to this uh, little uh, interview. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, you can just uh, leave it in the comments below. My brother's pretty active in the, the forums in the comments section. So if you need any more further advice or uh, uh, support, uh, feel free to uh, comment us below. Thank you. Thank you for your time.